do you rate mental toughness? I know, it's something of an outdated term, seen as a bit military. The realm of Navy SEALs, or Top Gun. Terms like resilience, grit, mental conditioning, and emotional strength and fitness are now more widely used. Toughness is seen as a little too hardcore, even cold, in the age of emotional expression. But you know what? The term doesn't matter. The concept does. Many of the people I work with list mental toughness as a goal. They want to stand strong when stressed or under pressure. They want to be able to think clearly during difficult or chaotic situations. They want to be able to perform at the highest level when tested or the odds are stacked against them. Those are good aims, not just for sport or business, but life. Mental toughness is the ability to handle and overcome adversity, stress, and challenges without losing their focus, motivation, or base optimism. Sounds good, right? Who wouldn't want a piece of that? Trouble is, mental toughness is a slippery beast. You can't see it and there's no measure for it. It can manifest in myriad ways. It can appear when you expect or hope it will, and when you think all is lost. In essence, you don't really know what you've got in your tank until life puts you to the sword. While no psychologist would ever say it was an advantage to be born or grow up in difficult circumstances, it does give you cause to develop mental toughness or trauma, I guess. But I've seen many who've grown up in privilege fall apart in the face of their first real test. It doesn't mean they're mentally weak, it just means they're inexperienced in dealing with the tough stuff. No matter who my clients are, I remind them that they can become mentally stronger, and naturally, their, their follow-up question is how. You can train your mental strength just like you train your body. If your body looks fit or ripped, it looks strong, and you can flex your muscles. So physically, you have a certain strength. Mentally, it's the same thing. You can train your psychological strength. So what's the vibe? You can't look at someone and know whether they're mentally tough or not. But if you spend time with someone who possesses this trait, you'll know. You'll pick up on their vibe. It's not in the set of their jaw or their direct gaze or how they spend their weekends. It's not that they never feel anxious. It's not that they blank out their emotions. It's in the way they behave when they are uncomfortable, not performing well, or when their hot buttons are pushed. They are calm in the face of distress. They can manage, not smother, their emotions. They are emotionally steady. It's a vibe. Here's the first step to building it. I never refer to mental toughness as a superpower. That makes it seem like only superheroes possess it, which is not true. The world is full of people who manage themselves well. Maybe it comes naturally. Maybe it's a skill they've learned. Perhaps they had no choice. The point is, if you want to be comfortable in the world, grow in your career, and achieve in your field, in a sustainable way, you need a measure of mental toughness, whatever you want to call it. The first step is to increase your tolerance for distress. The next time you feel your emotions dial up, maybe you feel nervous over a sports performance or a business meeting, maybe your partner winds you up or an item on the news has you raging, don't react. Just do nothing. This is not about stifling your feelings. It's about sitting next to them, feeling them, understanding that they are just emotions, learning that they won't hurt you, that you don't have to get rid of them. Most of all, that you can function perfectly well, even at the highest level, alongside them. Italian tennis player Janik Sinner, who won the Australian Open and his first Grand Slam tennis title in 2024, was a model of composure under pressure. From two sets down in the final, the 22-year-old held his nerve. He said it like this, I was nervous, but I just tried to make a good game. I just tried to stay in the present moment. In response to media questions, he said, I like to dance in the pressure storm. I'm also quite relaxed in this occasion, because I always try to enjoy on the Court. I think pressure is a privilege, to be honest. The point is, he didn't allow his emotions to free themselves and take over. He kept his game and his ambitions safe from them. He didn't tell himself to be mentally tough, he just played alongside his feelings. He swung his racket, he stayed calm. That's the vibe. It's a skill and a decision. You can have it too. Thanks for listening.